please take a deep breath together, everyone. into my life like an expert doctor and anointed my eyes with the healing salve of knowledge of wisdom and the darkness is beginning to dissipate Krishna <laughs> Prasthaya Namaste Saraswati Gauravani Pracha Pracha to His Divine Grace Sesi Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada who brought the path of bhakti to the Western world. He is very dear to Lord Krishna on this earth because he has taken shelter of his lotus feet. servant of Saraswati Goswami, you have so kindly delivered the West and the East from the illusion of impersonalism and voidism. And again, I take shelter at your lotus feet.
pleasure and honor to be with my mother and one of my daughters, my 13-year-old daughter. I guess I can say my mother is my first guru and my kids are my second guru. <laughs> this program is, of course, youth-focused and I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful you're here. We just traveled together. We went to Tirumala, Tirupati, in, uh, what is it, Andhra? The edge of Andhra. And we walked together up the mountain. Nine miles, 15 kilometers. And every step you say, I don't know about the next step. Where's Betsy? But this step, I'm going to take. Hare 
Krishna, 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 Hare Hare, Hare Rama. Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So let's uh, appreciate these wonderful musicians. We have Hiran on Murdanga. Please give him a round of applause. <laughs> Altaf Bai on uh, sitar. Again, my mother Rukmini. <laughs> Govinda on the flute. We have Baldev on vocal. My daughter Kaireva. And again, my name is Gorvani. Pleasure to be with you. Come on, how can I forget these guys? You know what? So, so, so these guys and I have become like brothers. Last year that I was here, we went together to a place called Chizilla. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's heard of this place, but it's like a pizza joint that's like a mix between a pizza joint and a horror movie. <laughs> but we had tons of fun. So, Ronnie, please give a round of applause. I apologize. So many of us, uh, we consider ourselves spiritual, we're trying to be spiritual, but you know every once in a while uh, reality gets in the way. Do you know what I mean? Um, so let's think about the story of Dhruva from Srimad Bhagavatam. Dhruva was also a youth, he was a little younger, he was six years old, but Dhruva uh, he was born a prince. He was the eldest son of a great emperor. And Dhruva was playing with his brother in the throne room, his brother Uttama. And he jumped up on his father's lap and they were laughing and joking. His father was sitting on the throne laughing and joking and the boys were laughing and playing. And he jumped up on his father's lap and suddenly he felt the hand of his stepmother on his neck and she threw him to the floor. And she said, Dhruva, you may not appreciate this now, but I'm saving you a lot of pain. Actually, I'm your best friend because I'm teaching you now that you will never sit on that throne. So if you learn now, you'll never suffer like you will if you think that you will sit on that throne. You understand? Dhruva was so hurt, he was so angry, he was confused. He ran home to his mother, who was actually, she was kind of a sadvi, his mom. And what did his mom say? What mom? What did his mom say? <laughs> I think many times I buried my, my face in my mom's sorry also. What did, what did she say? What did 
Sunita say to little Dhruva? Well, because she was such a sadhvi, she said, actually, your stepmother is right, Dhruva, that uh, I'm not the favored wife of the king, and actually, uh, you will never probably sit on the throne of the king, but I can only tell you that the, the great holy people, the great sages, go to the forest when they have problems, when they have questions in their hearts, and they take shelter of Lord Vishnu in the forest. So she said, even though maybe she thought he would never do it. but It was like a good, nice bedtime story. Soothe Dhruva. <laughs> you know, one day you can become a rishi. One day you can go to the forest at the Munis. But Dhruva had a, the heart of a warrior beating inside. So before anyone woke up the next morning, Dhruva left the palace and he walked and he walked and he walked. And you know what was in his mind? Not a very spiritual idea. Dhruva thought, oh, I'm going to do tapasya, and I'm going to meet this Lord, and I'm going to ask for a kingdom greater than the kingdom of not just my father, but my grandfather, Brahma. This kingdom will be so great that it's going to shame my father that he ever hurt me. That was his spiritual aspiration. So we hear the story of Dhruva and we think, Oh, silly Dhruva, he approached spiritual life with the wrong intention. But let's be honest. How many of us go to the temple and pray to the Lord, please, Lord, take away all my attachments. I don't want material success. I don't want happiness. I just want love for you. It's very rare. Let's be honest. Who does that? Honestly, who says that? You do. Okay, perfect. <laughs> please always stay that way. How do you will. All of us, we have mixed desires. So when Dhruva's mom described the Lord, she said, Dhruva said, I don't know who is the Lord, who is this Lord? And she said, his skin is the color of a blackish rain cloud. His eyes are like fully blossomed lotus petals. And they are so beautiful that they appear as if they are lotus petals tinged by the rays of the rising sun. He rides on the gigantic golden eagle known as Garuda. Everything is auspicious about this Lord. So Dhruva had this idea of the Lord in his heart. And he went into the forest and he began fasting on roots and berries. So I suggested for the evening that instead of giving you all a snack pack... <laughs> that to get in the mood, they just give you dirty, dusty roots and berries. <laughs> but the organizers of the program, they thought better. <laughs> so he was eating, he was eating those things. He was doing pranayam and he was doing ashtanga yoga and he was meditating on this form of the Lord in his heart. Mangalam Bhagavan Vishnu Mangalam Garudabraja Mangalam Pundari Acha Mangalam Pundari Acha Mangalaya Tano Hari Mangalaya Tano Mangalam 
playing his celestial vena, singing And he came into a clearing in the jungle. Why is he in the jungle? His hands were stained from digging in the dirt. His clothes were tattered and ripped. He was looking so hungry. He said, Druva, what are you doing here in the jungle? Druva told him the story. And Narada said what any great guru would say. What did he say, Joe Karini? What did, what did Narada say to Druva? Go home. He said, you're just six years old. Why are you here? Go home. There are tigers and snakes and uh, scary monkeys. I don't know. Go home, Dhruva. But Dhruva looked at him with very serious yogic eyes. He said, oh, great sage, I will not go until I've received what I've come for. So Narada took great pity in his heart. Now what happens to us when we go to a holy person with mixed desires? You understand what I say, mixed desires? We say, oh great guru, please give me fame. Oh great guru, please give me material success. But what does the guru hear? The guru hears, please give me love for God. If he, if he or she is a real guru, they hear, please, oh sage, please give me love for God. So Narada said, I'll help you. You must add mantra to your practice. And he taught him this mantra that we will all sing together right now. So let's hold in our minds whatever desire we have. Maybe it's something that we would never speak in public. We're so ashamed that we even have this desire. We won't speak it. Let's speak it into this mantra. Let's let Narada and Narada's descendant gurus, let them bless our desire, purify our hearts. Oh, 
Bhagavate Vasudeva
Dhruva's meditation became so intense, soon he would only break once in a while. He wouldn't even eat roots and berries. He was just eating leaves soaked in river water. More fasting, more intense meditation. Soon nothing. He was eating nothing but prana. Nothing but prana. Holding in his heart this form of the Lord. Bhagavan Vishnu, Mangalam Bhagavan Vishnu, Mangalam Garudavada. Suddenly, Dhruva, the form of the Lord disappeared in Dhruva's heart. He had been holding on to this form for nine months. Is that right, Avatar Leela Prabhu? We need a fact checker. <laughs> nine months only took such a short time for Dhruva. Something like that. Short time. Six, Six months. months. One for each year. I won't forget again. <laughs> And suddenly the form disappeared. It was the only thing that could have broken his meditation. And what happened when Dhruva opened his, opened his eyes? Someone tell me. The form of the Lord was right in front of him. 
And Dhruva was completely overwhelmed. I used to work, they, in my bio they said I used to work in Hollywood. That's, that is true. And once I had an opportunity to work with a very handsome actor named Paul Walker. Oh. <laughs> oh. That was so much fun I'm going to do it again. Paul Walker. Oh. <laughs> we once gave Paul Walker a Bhagavad Gita, actually. Oh, yeah, that's a good <laughs> Well, Paul Walker was, uh, he passed away actually. Short time after that, we did kirtan with him and we gave him a Bhagavad Gita and a short time afterwards he passed away. Anyway, so. When Paul Walker walked in the room for the first time, he was so handsome. It was like everyone became nervous. That's how handsome he was. What do I do with my hands? I'll put them in my pocket. Imagine how Dhruva felt. Dhruva was looking at the face of the source of beauty itself. The face of the source of beauty itself. Dhruva was completely overwhelmed. And he couldn't look at the Lord's face and so his eyes fell to the Lord's feet. And there he saw those lotus-like feet. They were so filled with saffron particles of dust and nectar that the bees, the bumblebees, started coming out of the jungle. And they were hovering around his feet, trying to taste the nectar. And Dhruva felt the Lord's hand on his head. And prayers began to flow like the crying of a baby for the Lord crying prayers from Dhruva's heart. And Dhruva said, Oh Lord, I thought I knew what was precious. I thought I knew what was a great jewel. But I was such a fool. It was just like a piece of broken glass in the street. I don't want any of these things. I just want pure love for you. So this is the power of the grace of a guru like Narada and the blessings of chanting these mantras. They have the power to chase down those desires to their root and transform them into their spiritual essence. The Lord blessed Dhruva not only with the kingdom, but he blessed him with pure love. He gave him the planet of the Pole Star, which we know historically gives direction to wayward travelers, where Dhruva still rules in one of the Vaikuntha planets today. If you ever feel lost, just go outside and look up at the North Star and see Dhruva. And remember that if you simply add the chanting of mantra to your daily life, all of your desires will be transformed into their spiritual essence, and you will be transformed yourself. Your life will be healed from within. My favorite part of the story is that at the end of Dhruva's life, death himself came to Dhruva and said, Oh Dhruva, it is time. Please step on my head and use my head as a stair to ascend to the spiritual world. Please climb on this chariot to go to the spiritual world. And Dhruva said, I cannot. Because I am wondering what the destination is of my mother. She is my first guru. And they said, don't worry, see your mother. And Dhruva's mother was flying ahead of him on a swan airplane to Vaikuntha. So parents, never be shy to share this beautiful knowledge with your children and know that you are their gurus. And let us always be grateful for all the teachings we receive from all of our gurus, formal and informal. And with gratitude we sing just a few more times. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo 